Well, we talked a little bit, and you sent me a lot of uh, information about smartphone identity theft, but for the consumers out there who just don't really get it or know what it is, could you give a brief synopsis of what it is? You know, uh, we started out with just making phone calls and now you can basically do anything on them. Um, but with all of that connectivity comes information that is stored on those smartphones. Um, and so those become devices that uh, comp can compromise our identities. Um, so we need to be more safe with them um, than we would have been in the past with, say, a, a, I guess a non-smartphone, a dumb phone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and um, what would you say the biggest risks are to compromising your identity when you're using your phone? I know there's a lot of different ways that we use our phones, but just from what you've seen, what are the worst ways that people are getting their identity compromised on phones? Well, the thing with identity theft is that you're barely ever um, able to trace back where your information was compromised. However, one thing that we have been seeing and, and is um, incredibly dangerous when you get into the details is actually just losing your smartphone. Um, with all that information on there, a lot of people don't password protect their phones um, or they leave them open or, or whatnot. And um, with all that information, it's, it's basically like someone having access to your computer, your home computer. And what are some of the ways that people should protect themselves on their phones? What are some easy steps they can do right now at home? Well, what I would recommend is that you um, enroll in a backup and wiping program. And basically what that is, is it syncs your phone with a um, server somewhere else so that your information is safe. Um, and if you lose or, um, you know, have your smartphone stolen, then the backup and wiping, your information is backed up. And then you would, you know, call whatever, whether it's through your provider or um, through a third party, you would call them and tell them that your phone has been lost or stolen and they would be able to wipe it clean so that it would be uh, as it was when it came from the factory. That way you are able to retain all the information that you had on there, but it's not going to be available to the thieves. We talked a little bit about, or you sent me some information about apps and some of the security that goes along with that. So what would you say to people, what should they watch for when they're downloading an app to make sure they're not downloading malware or something that's gonna hurt their phone and their identity? Right. Well, you have to realize that anything that can be downloaded onto a computer, you have antivirus for your computer, but you don't have it for your smartphone uh, most times. And so anything that you would be able to download, a, a Trojan or a spyware or anything like that, can be downloaded onto your smartphone as well. Um, usually that is through an app. And in order to make sure that you are not going to be the victim of a um, rogue app, as we call them, you're going to want to make sure that you check out every application before you download it. So even a quick Google search will show you um, whether people are having problems with that application or not. You always also want to pay attention to the um, providers, so whoever created the application. If it is a, an application for, say, Google search, you're going to want to make sure that it's actually created by Google. Um, that will lend to its legitimacy. Um, other than that, you want to make sure that they don't take too much information. Um, most times apps will ask for uh, permission to access information and you want to make sure that you take an extra close look at that and make sure that they're not accessing any information that they wouldn't need to perform whatever they're supposed to perform with their application. And let's talk about Wi-Fi because, you know, we can go to Panera, you can go to, you can 3G, you can roam, and you can do all of this and access the internet from anywhere. How do you know that you're on a safe network and how important is that whenever you're accessing your information on your phone? Yeah, so some people will, um, in order to save their, their minutes that they have um, for internet access, they will go ahead and sign into a Wi-Fi network. Um, public Wi-Fi networks are not I mean, they're not safe. They basically, when you log into them, um, you are attached to anyone else who has logged in and you're on their shared network, um, which leaves all of the information that is on your phone uh, vulnerable to whoever else is on a shared network. Um, we would always recommend that you actually use your Wi-Fi through your phone. So you don't want to um, you know, go into an internet cafe and log into their Wi-Fi um, in order to use the internet on your phone, you want to make sure that you stay on your own network. Okay, great. 
And then, of course, what should people do if they do become a victim of smartphone identity theft? If they find their phone has been stolen or they think that their bank account has been hacked, what are some of the steps they should take next? Well, there's a, uh, you have to realize or think about what um, you had done prior um, in order to protect yourself. If you have in, engaged in a uh, wipe up or wipe, sorry, if you have <laughs> enrolled in a backup and wiping program, then you would just call that company and make sure that your phone is wiped. Um, and I wouldn't be too worried about it after that. However, if you did not en um, enroll in a backup and wiping program, then you're going to need to take uh, stock of what, what was in your cell phone. Are there social security numbers in your smartphone? I know that um, some people do actually store that private information. Um, was there access to your email on that phone and what would be on your email that someone would be able to access? You're going to want to change your passwords to anything that um, could be accessed through your phone. Um, and if you find that your social security may have been a uh, number may have been put at risk, then you're going to want to call and place a 90-day fraud alert on your credit reports with the three different credit reporting agencies. Um, get your credit reports and, and monitor those closely. Okay, great. Is there anything else that you think people out there should know about their smartphones and their identity before they, you know, just go out and start using all kinds of apps? Um, no, just be, be aware, be cautious, know what you're doing on your smartphone, and don't take the technology for granted. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us on this call today. No problem.